Ancient Greece in 500 BC. The Persian Empire controls the Greek cities on the Asian coast in the east and on the coast of Thrace in the north. The takeover of Macedonia marked the end of the Persian advance into Greek territories more than a decade earlier. While the Asian coast has been securely under Persian control for more than 40 years. But in the next few years the Persian Empire is going to witness the biggest rebellion against its rule by the Greek cities there. The story of the uprising begins on Naxos, the wealthiest island of the Aegean Sea at the time. Naxos is an independent Greek state, and the dominant power in the island group known as the Kiklades, controlling Paros, Andros and some of the other neighboring islands. The symbol that Naxos uses on its coins is the Kantharos, a drinking cup for wine. Naxos had an oligarchic government, but in 500 BC a populist uprising banishes the ruling oligarchs from the island. The exiled leaders flee to the city of Miletos, where they are friends with the city's tyrant. Miletos at this time is the leading city of Greek Ionia on the Asian coast, and it is at the height of its prosperity. The city is famous for being the place of origin of the Greek philosophical tradition. The city-state uses the head of a lion as its coin symbol. The exiled leaders of Naxos who arrived in the city ask for military assistance from Miletos that would help restore them to power at home. The ruler of Miletos is the Persian-appointed Greek tyrant called Aristagoras. He agrees to help the Noxians, but his city alone doesn't have sufficient resources for this. So he pitches the plan to Artapernes, the Persian governor of the entire region, who resides in the city of Sardis. Artapernes is the brother of the Persian great king Darius I, and he has the authority to recruit troops from the other Greek cities of the Asian coast. Sardis is the regional capital of the Persian Empire, and its largest city in the region. The city was once the capital of the former Lydian Empire, that ruled over the region and the coastal Greek cities, before it was taken over by the Persians. Sardis portrays the Persian king on its coins. The plan now involves a Persian fleet of 200 ships capturing Naxos and restoring the exiled oligarchs to power there, who would then act as Persian vassals. The Persian Empire would also obtain the rest of the Kiklades islands governed by Naxos. And then use them as a stepping stone for invading the much larger island of Euboea. The Persian governor of Sardis agrees to the plan, but the Persian king has to sign off on it too, so he sends heralds to the royal court. The Persian king Darius the Great resides in his capital city of Susa, at the heart of the Persian Empire. The king too gives his blessings to the proposed military expedition. The person appointed to lead the campaign is Megabates, another member of the Persian royal family. He is a cousin of both the great king and of Artapernes. The Persian Empire at this time already stretches from Macedonia in the west, to the Indus River in the east, and if this campaign succeeds, it would also expand to include most of the Greek islands of the Aegean Sea. The core of the Persian fleet assembled for the invasion comes from the Persian-controlled Greek cities of the Asian coast. These cities are ruled by Greek tyrants appointed by the Persians, and when a town has to participate in a Persian campaign, its tyrant is usually expected to take the role of a general and lead the city's army into battle. The combined fleet of the Persian-controlled Greek cities gathers at Miletos. The fleet consists of 200 ships carrying an estimated 8,000 marines, and it's under the command of Megabates, the Persian general, and Aristagoras, the Greek tyrant of Miletos who came up with the idea of the expedition. Reporting to them are the various tyrants of the participating Greek cities, and the fleet also carries the exiled oligarchs of Naxos. The fleet first sails north, pretending to head for the Hellespontos, where the Persians usually cross into Europe. But they actually dock at Kaukasa instead, on the island of Chios, then prepare to turn around and use the north wind to descend on Naxos in a surprise attack. However, the two leaders of the expedition immediately have a falling out, before the invasion can even begin. 
The Persian general Megabades brutally punishes the negligent captain of a ship from Mindas, but Aristagoras revokes the punishment and challenges the authority of the Persian. The humiliated Persian general then secretly sends a boat ahead to Noxos to warn them about the coming invasion. As a result, when the rest of the fleet arrives at Noxos, the city is already prepared and fortified for a long siege. The siege drags on for four months, and while the Persians are able to secure some parts of the island, they fail to enter the main city. When the Persians run out of money to pay the soldiers, they are forced to retreat, so the siege of Noxos ends in failure. The fleet leaves Noxos and sails back to Ionia. After the failed expedition and his falling out with the Persian general, Aristagoras fears that the Persians will remove him from power at Miletos, and he is contemplating starting a revolt to keep his position. At the same time, his predecessor, the previous Greek tyrant of Miletos, called Histiaios, also signals his intention to start a revolt at home. He is currently forced to live in the Persian royal court at Susa under close supervision, but he wants to return to Miletos and join the uprising. Histiaios, separated by more than a thousand miles from Aristagoras, had to come up with an ingenious way to send his secret message about starting a revolt. He had shaved the scalp of his most trustworthy slave, tattooed his message onto it and waited for the hair to grow out. Then, the moment it had sprouted fully back, Histiaios packed the slave off to Miletos, with just a single order, namely, that once he had arrived in Miletos, he should instruct Aristagoras to shave off his hair and examine his scalp. Aristagoras and his inner circle at Miletos decide to start the revolt. The fleet that returned from the Noxos expedition is still stationed at the city of Meuse, with the Greek tyrants on board. The coup plotters send a delegation to Meuse to arrest all the tyrants there. Most of the leadership of the Persian-controlled Greek cities is captured. Then Aristagoras declares Miletasi's independence from the Persian Empire and forms a more democratic government. The rest of Ionia quickly follows Miletasi's example, and the Greek tyrants appointed by the Persians to lead their cities are toppled and exiled. The alliance of the twelve Ionian cities forms the core of the revolt. Their confederation has a long history that goes back more than a century. Miletas recruits the neighboring Greek states outside Ionia by sending them back their tyrants who were captured during the coup. So the revolt spreads from the Ionians to the neighboring Aeolians in the north and Carians in the south. The Aeolians bordering on Ionia form a confederation of 11 city-states led by Kime. These Aeolians already pledged to follow the Ionians when the Persians first invaded them almost 50 years earlier. The symbol on Kime's coins is the head of a horse. Lesbos is the most prosperous Aeolian island and contains a confederation of five Greek city-states, of which Mytilene takes the leading role. The symbol on the coins of Lesbos is the heads of two confronted bulls. Mytilene executes its Persian-appointed tyrant, unlike most of the other Greek cities, who only exile them. The island of Lesbos also has an extensive area of influence on the mainland coast and on the neighboring small islands. The rest of the Aeolians who live around Mount Ida also join the uprising. Even the tribe of the Gergites join, a neighboring barbarian nation considered to be the descendants of the ancient Trojans. The Carians around Termera and Milasa also join the revolt by banishing their tyrants. The Carians are not a Greek nation, but they have started adopting the culture of the neighboring Greek states, and many of them learn to speak the Greek language. The first priority of the revolting Greek states is to find some new allies against the Persians, so they send Aristagoras to Sparta. Sparta is the capital city of the state of Lacedaemon, the leading military power in Greece. Together with their allies, the Spartans control most of the Peloponnesian Peninsula. Unlike most other Greek states, the Spartans didn't use any coins for money, its usage was considered decadent and was prohibited. The Spartan state is ruled by two kings, and one of them, called Cleomenes, receives the Ionian delegation. 
Aristagoras first appeals to their shared Greek identity when he requests help from Sparta against Persian oppression. But he also proposes that Sparta should march on the capital city of the Persian Empire, and promises that unimaginable riches await them if they take over the lands of the Persians. The route of the invasion would follow the famous royal road that connects Sardis with Susa. In the first stage of the invasion, a joint force of the Spartans and Ionians would set off from Ephesus and capture the Persian regional capital at Sardis. The Spartans would then continue alone through the rest of the Lydia region, famous for its abundant silver. But after this comes a long march through the bare plains of Perigia to the river Hollis, the well-defended traditional border that divides Asia Minor in half. An even longer march through the province of Cappadocia would involve passing through a mountainous area with narrow passes and strong fortifications. Then the army would have to cross the Euphrates River as it passes through the outskirts of the Kalikia and Armenia provinces. And in the Madiana region they would have to cross four rivers that all require boats to get across. So, after seven provinces and seven major rivers they would finally arrive at the Persian capital in Kisia. But when the Spartan king realizes that the entire journey would take three months, he angrily dismisses the Ionian envoy. But soon the Spartans receive an additional offer from the Scythians, a tribe of horse nomads in the Pontic steppe. The Scythians live between the Istros and Tanais rivers, or the Danube and Don as they are known today. They want retribution from the Persian king for invading their land 14 years earlier. The Scythians are able to cross the Chimerion Bosporus into Asia in winter, when the waters in the strait are frozen. From there, they would launch their own invasion, entering the Persian Empire at the river Pasis. Then they would join the Spartan army and march against the Persian king together. But the Spartans reject this offer too. After the rejection from Sparta, the Ionians try their luck in Athens, the second greatest military power in mainland Greece. The symbol that Athens uses on its coins is an owl. Athens at this time is still a young democracy, its last tyrant was overthrown only a decade earlier. Hippias, the banished tyrant of Athens, fled to Sigeion, a former Athenian colony that is now under Persian control, where he continues to rule as tyrant. Hippias made a deal with Artapernes, the Persian governor at Sardis, that he would turn Athens into a Persian vassal state if they help restore him to power there. This outraged the Athenians, who wanted to stay independent and democratic and the public opinion turned against the Persians. As a result, the Athenian assembly votes to send help to the Ionian revolt, effectively declaring war on the Persian Empire. The city-state of Eritrea is one of Athens' friendly neighbors. They display an octopus on their coins. Eritrea also decides to ally with the rebelling Ionians, because they remember that Miletos helped them in a war against the neighboring Colchis once, and they want to return the favor. The neighboring Colchis used to be the rival of Eritrea, but it was defeated by Athens a few years earlier, and it's now under Athenian control. Colchis displays an eagle carrying a snake on its coins. With its old enemy gone, the small city-state of Eritrea was able to become the leading sea power in Greece. Now that the alliance is formed against the Persians, the Greek-Persian wars are about to begin. 